ready for a club webinar number 65. Got a great topic. You know what? I probably say that every single time, don't I? Hey, we got a great pop topic tonight because we always have great you topics. Do. We, <laughs> this is a club question that came in. Uh, don't forget that if you are not a club member and you want to be a club, club member real easy to do just go to cco.us forward slash club we'll talk a little bit about the club for you but there's a lot of advantages to being in the club the question that came in this week that i just i chose for us to talk about was on uh code two zero six eight zero it's for fixation devices removing of fixation devices and um, one of the reasons that it was such a great question it was quite a simple question actually is because i didn't know the the answer at first and that is because cpt codes as you know is not the code set that is my favorite now if they'd asked an icd question it probably wouldn't have made an impact on me and i would just da, 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 this is the answer you know but I, I have to go look that up i have to do a little research and um so i found the answer and i thought you know what she's not going to be the only one that has this question i didn't know it there's uh needed clarification on it there were some CPT assistant information out there. Uh, actually, there was quite a bit, and I thought this would be good for the club. We need to get that out there for everybody. So you have two things you can do. If you're in the club, you can go check the question that was given in the club, and then the response, and you can actually um, talk on that that forum as well and maybe offer some insight if you have some experience using the 2068 code or uh, some background on removal of fixation devices and uh, you will see that as ROH sometimes in documentation if you do orthopedics of course you're going to be familiar with this code uh, but uh, it or, or even if you work for a surgical center you know, uh, ambulatory surgical center, you may have uh, all different types of specialties coming through, including orthopedics, right? So uh, this might be a code that you need to pay attention to and be familiar with. And so again, that's the reason that I picked it to share with you. Uh, our club members, that's what we do. We take the, the questions that they have. If we know that there's one that they specifically want us to do a lecture and a recording and really kind of break it out and explain it, then they'll give us a heads up. Uh, they can send it in as a topic request, but the club is so active that it's easier to just say, you know, I think this would really make a good webinar question. Can you give me the answer? And then, or, or help me figure out the answer, not just give me the answer that, that's another thing about the club uh, we do have sometimes you'll have people that pop in and say uh, you know this is the question what's the answer it's like well but this you know don't work that way <laughs> i don't want to do your homework <laughs> and so but uh, you could tell the people that's been in the club for a while and they'll say this is what i was thinking you know this is this is the code i thought but it just doesn't feel right uh, or i have two codes you know which is a better one in your opinion and then that as well as people coming in and uh the experiences they're seeing at work you know we had uh, this particular scenario and we uh you know, half the office thinks it should be coded this way and use this modifier. The other half of the office doesn't agree that thinks we should do it this way. You know, and I, uh, we can't find anything to back up either's point of view. Uh, and, you know, can you can you break out or find some uh, other research for us? And we love to do that. We really love to do that uh, because also other people in the club have insight or have experienced and said, this is what we went with, or there is no right answer, so we chose to do it this way, and then this is the way we set up our compliance and everything to go with it. It's not always black and white encoding. <laughs> so what we're gonna talk about today is how to code, and it's fixation removal procedure uh, codes for 20680, straight from the club. If you want more information on the club, very easy to find it, cco.us forward slash club, where you can get lots of support, as well as this very lecture tonight on the fixations, but whatever lecture that we do that you may be seeing in the future, you can have it 
uh, at your fingertips transcribed and you can go back and stop and move the video around look at the transcription and the comments and stuff and probably get CEUs off of it a lot of advantages to being in the club so now we're going to get right down to the topic enough of that fluff and behind the scenes and my blather about how much I like the club the question that came in was doctors perform an ROH which is removal of hardware from a triple plantar fusion due to painful hardware would that be 20680 times three units or only 20680 times one. Now let's break down the information. So I went ahead and made you know this little table so uh, you would understand for some of them as for some of us that aren't as CPT savvy that that's not our main code set that we work in whenever you have an ROH that's a very common term used in orthopedics and it just means removal of hardware pretty simple and then uh, plantar if you didn't know just means the bottom of the foot or the sole of the foot uh, you've probably heard of things like uh, plantar fasciitis where you know you get pain uh, the, if this is your heel the pain is right here on the heel I've had that it's really bad in one leg uh, one foot and then it started going into the other foot it, actually it's this it can't remember if it's a tendon or a ligament but it's one of them and they get inflamed uh, and irritated but thus plantar fasciitis itis and um, there's really not much you can do about it uh, there they could stick you with cortisone and things there's foot exercises and stuff but it's quite painful I suffered for almost a year went to a couple different doctors miserable and ended up getting uh, a different pair of shoes he did the doctor had said don't ever go barefoot um, and that that I was really bad about walking around barefoot all over the place but he had said to uh, check out different types of shoes and don't wear tennis shoes and um, the shoes that I got not Birkenstocks anyway they are uh, dance coast changed my life and within a week the inflammation had gone down that is those those traditional black and you'll notice in the medical field if you go walk through doctor's offices or the hospitals and stuff you'll see a lot of people wearing those dance coats it's amazing the way they're set up that's plantar fasciitis so we are going to talk about the removal of hardware with 20680 and that code definition is removal of implant which would be ROH removal of hardware notice that I've done the bat technique here underlined deep and everything behind the semicolon should be highlighted so deep and then behind that that's saying um, you know buried wire pin screw metal bands nail rod or plate those are the things that they put into you to hold bones together for the most part all right now there is another code and that's 206870. Uh, and we're going to talk about that uh, because the difference between 20680, which is the one the question was made over, it says deep, thus deep is underlined, right? But with 70, it's superficial. Okay. So you want to underline superficial. And then actually, all the other wording is the same. You would still highlight uh, everything after the semicolon. Right, so that's the bat technique that we teach um, at CCL. So what I decided to do was do a little research on what actually happens when you have uh, the removal of an implant. And an implant, for the most part, can be lots of different things. But we're, we're talking orthopedics tonight. But an implant also would be a defibrillator device right uh, some some people have other things that are implanted put in the chat or uh, talk you know make a comment of other implants that could be in the body that might need to be removed and usually they're not removed unless there's a complication honestly if they're going to put pins in you um, a lot of times they leave those pins in unless it's an external right so my sister had broke a uh, her her I think it was her pinky that she broke and so of course they had pins like three pins sticking out of her finger 
and uh, they don't leave those in there. Of course, they pull them out, and I've got some pictures tonight. Yay! Uh, but uh, sometimes they'll do external where they'll have pins in here, and they'll have like a rod on the outside, not on the inside. So that's an external device that could be removed. Or like her son, who happens to be extremely tall, grew very, very fast. And so those growth plates in his bones, uh, because he grew so fast and he is so tall that uh, he fractured his pelvis, both sides. And so they ran uh, screws into his hips for that. And so he had let's see, three pins on one side and five on the other. She sent me pictures and I wish I could have found them because I was going to post those in there for you. But these screws are literally like six inches long, you know, and they stay forever. The only reason that they would take those out would be if you got an infection or there was a complication, some reason to, you know, they're literally drilled in and no reason to take them out. The bone will grow over them. Just like if uh, you, you know, have you seen people that like put a bike on a, in a tree, a fork of a tree, and you come back five years later and it's grown over and the, the, you know, the bike or the whatever they put in there is now encased into the tree. That's what your, bo your bones do. So an internal fixation device or implant is going to be removed and we need to know that usually these are put in to support the bone, like for him or some other type of fracture. It could be weakened or diseased bone as well. Sometimes with some types of cancer, they'll do that, bone cancers, and kind of support, try to support. But um, again, you can go and do your own research for why they would, would put implants into the bones and why not. Uh, uh, I've got some great pictures at the end here for us to discuss that may uh, whet those appetites to go look for more information. Notice the two codes I told you about 20670 is superficial and the 20680 is deep. Really the only difference in these two codes. All right, so that's what you need to remember. Uh, but the question came over on eight zero. So seven zero, your key words, uh, how, what they end up doing is it's a superficial pen, meaning that it, it's probably sticking out or it's right there under the skin, all right? It's not very far. When they they pin like for this, I think they do this one was uh, the, the actual picture is more for like a bunion repair. So your, your, your great toe, if you're looking at that, so this is her, her toe and you notice that scar down here lower, that's where the bunion would be sticking out. Okay, and that ultimately the bone is, is sticking out kind of like this. So what they do is they go in and they either file that off or do something and they straighten this back out, put a, a, and then put a pin in here. And then I think they go in, you can, there's lots of pictures of this being done and then wire this together so that bone can't fall back out, right? And thus the scars, and then they have to pin these. Now, notice he has like a pair of pliers or something. They literally just grab the end of those and there's usually like a little pearl ball or something uh, and just whip those out, pull them out because you don't really feel, your bones don't have feelings. <laughs> it doesn't hurt. Uh, they can numb that. But when they do superficial, when you're reading documentation and you're saying, how do I know that this is going to be a 7-0 versus an 8-0? The things you want to know is that uh, they may do a little incision, but you know, most of the time they're just going to do top stitches or just put in even um, the Steri strips, you know, those butterfly uh, band-aids and everything. There's no layered closure. That's key, okay? Because if it's deep, they will do layered closure. Let's look at the difference. You're like, oh yeah. Now, first I wanted to show you the difference. External fixation, 
this is external fixation. See how we have all of that equipment. We still have the pins going into the bone. And mind you, those are drilled straight into the bones. They're not just against the bone to hold it still. No, it's through the bone. And they use the same power tool that like my husband has outside uh, and the, and there's the, you go to YouTube the and get pictures that previous picture with the girl with the dark toenails um, uh, that's a YouTube video and I did put those links in the resources at the end of this so if you're in the club you can literally go in and grab those links and go watch those YouTube videos and get more information about how um, that's done and if you're not squeamish I would advise you if you're working with these codes go do that it's going to make you um, understand the process better. So those key words that in the video that he, the, the provider will be saying, that will be in the documentation and that'll pop for you. It, it'll make you quicker and more accurate, honestly, if you can stand to look at that. Bones, I love bones, I love memorizing bones. However, I don't really like to see procedures on bones. I'm more of a blood and guts type type thing but uh, I think it's because the tools they use on bones and the noises for some reason doesn't that doesn't get me so external fixation you'll see a lot of those halos that are being used and they're all wired together uh, what's the name of that that uh, tinker set or something that that you could get where you've got all those metals and screws and stuff and you can make all kinds of things that's kind of what they do in orthopedics so two zero six eight Oh, what you want to know is a lot of times these are done in SC, or excuse me, ASCs, which is ambulatory surgery centers. You can get a certification in that, specializing in coding for ASCs. You know, that would be that would be a really fun credential to, to think about getting, uh, especially if you like reading op reports. The other key thing you need to remember about 680 is that we're going to still probably in 70 you're probably cutting a little bit to pull that stuff out but this is deep right not superficial with 7080 is deep and so therefore you're going to have probably anesthesia and uh, multi-layered repair we're going to do sutures and or, or staples. We're pretty prevalent now to use staples. Staples actually heal faster, they say. There's a lot of advantages to doing staples versus um, sutures, you know, uh, faster too. You can go in there ka -chunk, ka -chunk, ka -chunk, versus having to do those whip stitches and roll and blah, blah, blah. So uh, incision multi layered. So, what are you going to look at in your documentation? Determine if it's 20670 versus 20680. We want the words deep in there. And even if they don't use deep, because sometimes they, they don't, uh, we're looking for what type of anesthesia was done, how deep did they go, and the giveaway is the layered repair. Layered repair, right? Very good. So external fixation, this is what some of that hardware looks like that's inside you uh, when they do those. And over here, how many of you guys can guess what that is? What part of the anatomy is in that one that says internal? Any guesses? Any guesses? And while you're guessing, I'm going to go look up and see. Uh, Whitney says, I had a patient who had a dislocate who had dislocated their shoulder five times before, and this visit was their sixth. It was manipulated in the ER, and ortho was consulted, but surgery not necessary. Gosh, I bet they could sneeze and pop that thing out. So uh, Susan of Beaumont, Texas, you are right, Susan. It is a shoulder. So this was a fracture of the humerus, and it was the uh, proximal end of the humerus, meaning closest to the body. So if you had the arm sticking out, you know, if you're if you're looking at your hand and you want, this would be the distal end of my finger and this would be the proximal end of my finger. So it would be closer to the center, even though, you know, so distal, medial, middle, and um, 
uh, so proximal right there closest to the main part of the body and uh, when I pulled this one that's what they said it was uh, this was actually it came up for a removal of hardware on uh, medial no not medial uh, proximal fracture of the uh, humerus which is the large bone in the arm so yes we're working on the shoulder thus you see the ASL uh, is part of the ligaments and, and stuff and that's what they're t naming what these holes were and everything and uh, I think they had an infection and they had to go in and and remove the hardware I, I think but it looks to me like this might be new and they're putting it in but I could be wrong good information so that's internal hardware and then uh, external for the other side Ex uh, I got more pictures, don't worry. Yep, Linda was right. She also said shoulder. Now that we would have explained the two, the two difference, um, remember at the beginning I mentioned that we had some good CPT assistant information and mostly they did what I already told you at the beginning, how CPT assistant um, uh, keywords. My, the key words that I think of when I'm looking at a document, especially an op report, you know, there a lot of this stuff is fodder. And so in the description, right, when we looked at the two codes and we use the bat technique, the the superficial and the deep, those words in the description of the code that differentiated the two codes, we underlined superficial and deep and we know that if we're going deep we're going through uh, muscle and to bone thus uh, we're going to have multi-layered closure mm -hmm. so that's important other key words that are going to keep these in the same bubble so that's back to the bubble and highlighting you get with the bat technique uh, were external Okay, so external fixations. So CPT assistant went out to, to explain a little bit more, not just the two codes that we were looking at, and said um, it's no longer needed and can be safely removed. That's why you would be using these codes. Uh, that subsequent casting, bracing, or surgery may also follow the removal of the external fixation. So just because we take, like they had that halo and everything, uh, they take that all off, doesn't mean that everything is all honky-dory, ready to go. No, we may still have to support that extremity or that bone for a little while uh, for further healing. So they go on to mention 20690 and through 20697. And it said that it relates to the application adjustment and removal of external fixation systems. So that's that's that code range. And then it goes up, heads up uh, for 26094, when it, that would be we're going to remove do a removal under anesthesia, so that would be deep, right, you know, of external fixation system, and then um, you wouldn't have to worry about doing the anesthesia uh, as well. That's all included in the package of 26094. And then it goes on to also highlight in the CPT assistant that if we're uh, removing the uh, external fixator without anesthesia it's not separately reportable that's all bundled in and then they go on to say um, during or at the conclusion of the procedure is an in inclusive series service of code 20670 20680 and 20690 so that was a heads up on CPT assistant for that, but that's not all. It went on to say, uh, again, more or less just clarifying what we've already talked about, that 20680 is deep and that it describes a unit of service. Now, remember her question at the beginning said, are we gonna use 26080 times three or times one? 
So that's part of the question, not just what the code was used for, but how many units am I and I am I doing? So the two six to the two zero six um, eight zero. The code for removing a deep implant describes a unit of service that is reported only once. OK, but here is the key provided the original injury is located on one site. OK, that's really important. And regardless of the number of screws, plates, rods, or incisions. So go back to that leg that we saw, right, with the halo and all the pins and everything. And they're going to take all of that off. And let's say then they do have to do a little cut and remove some stuff superficially, right? Now, now this is all going to be the same for 206870, uh, by the way, but for 80. And let's say that they do cut and they're going to take something off the all the way down the bone. So they, they take one of those plates, like what you're seeing here. They're going to unscrew those and they're going to take that little plate off with that foot, right? Now, that's deep because we're all the way down to the bone. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it's still a unit of one. It wouldn't even matter, which they wouldn't do, but let's say that they cut him on the top and they also did the planter underneath side of the foot that they had to, to cut and remove a plate here and here on the, on the top and the bottom. So two incisions, it doesn't matter how many incisions, it doesn't matter that there was a, uh, a plate on the top and one on the bottom, doesn't matter. Uh, what matters is that it's one area, anatomically one area, okay? Uh, they give an example, uh, but um, I didn't think it was, I mean, that was what the example in CPT assistant uh, came up with and, and, you know, it's like, okay, I didn't think that was, but the key right there is that yellow, provided the original injury is located on one site. Ah. What happens if we have laterality or bilateral? So if we have multiple sites, meaning what do we have both femurs? And they're going to remove both right and left pins and plates to both femurs. That is going to be using more than one unit. It's two different anatomical sites. Doesn't matter that they have the same name, that it's both a femur. It's two, it la has laterality. So we have the left and we have the right that's going to get removed. Very important. Okay. And um, it also said uh, that would be appropriate only when the hardware removes were performed for another fracture in a different anatomical site. So what? What if you had a uh, femur, which is a very long bone, and you had the distal the, and the medial uh, ends, you know, the, the, me the middle and the distal, and you're removing hardware? Well, it's not, even though it's a different anatomical site, meaning distal and medial, I don't, you're not going to get really more units out there. It's still the femur, okay? Uh, I, it would they're talking about if the example they give you here is the ankle and the humerus, or you have left and right femur. So keep that in mind. That's how you're going to get your units. Think of a person who's been in a motor vehicle accident, right? Some type of uh, blunt force trauma or other types of trauma, you could end up with multiple fractures, and then they could go in and be taking all of these pins out. Thus, look at the picture. I had to make it kind of small to fit, but we have fractures in both legs for this person. So that would be more than one unit. If we have more than one, then we could append the modifier 59 because that would be a separately uh, uh, it was a distinct procedural service. So make sure that you know that you have that at your disposal to better tell what's going on. And notice that you could use modifier 22 if it was um, even it was more intense than what they had expected. So increased procedural services. They said, hey, heads up. 
you know, CPTO assistant wanted to let you know. So modifier 59 is poss a possibility to use as well as modifier 22. Two different modifiers that could be applicable to what you're doing. And yes, Whitney says that looks very painful. I agree, it does. Uh, let's see, so uh, we have a question that says, what uh, if we have a gunshot wound and they do a re-exploration, debridement and removal of external fixation device all at the same time the gunshot wound caused the tibial fibial fracture? Okay, so, uh, well, the question would be, you know, if we go in a second time, that's if we're removing anything, uh, re exploration is something else. That's a different code, right? But if you're actually going to go in and remove, but you're going to get uh, to code for the debridement, you're not going to get to code for the exploration if you're doing other stuff because it's just given. You're already in there. But debridement, removal, um, then then you can. Yeah. So there is even more codes that that could be applicable. All right. Well, I think we're probably doing really good on time. Uh, I feel like I've been talking a mile a minute, but let's now talk about examples. So we have two codes that that we could use, right? We have the um, seven zero, the one ending in seven zero, and we have the code ending in eight zero. So let's start with A. We have screws put into uh, the two sides of the femur, actually, so the top of the femur, they're going into the femur, uh, uh, they, they're actually going into the hip joint too, but this is still classified as the femur. And which code do you think, put it in your chat or your questions, which code is for A? Right, we have two, areas, the femur, and we have multiple screws, and we're going to remove them. Kind of a trick question, guys, though, because I didn't tell you how they're going to remove them. And when we look at an x-ray, we think, okay, well, they're right there on the surface, but actually they're not. <laughs> They're not really on the surface, are they? They are screwed down all the way down to the bone. So how are they going to get to those screws, right? There is a whole lot of meat and fat between that bone. It's not like right here, you know. Um, so this, uh, they are going to have to cut. And um, because it's such a fleshy area, they can't just make a little incision and then stick their drill bit in there and kind of like figure around where it's at, you know, kind of, um, no, that would, that would kind of be a waste. So no, they're, they're going to give, give you, give a little opening there. That, that probably doesn't have to be that big of an opening, but the fact is, is it's very, very deep, right? So yes, Susan, you're right. Two, zero, six, eight, zero, because they're going to have to cut in to get those out right? There's no marker on the outside except for a scar. And then they are going to literally just take one of those DeWalt drills or whatever they're called, stick it in there and just back it up, okay? Each one and then do it on the other side. So, you know, pretty simple. And yet, um, it. Well, let's say these screws had been in there for a while, but there was a, an infection started right then we're going to be going in there and cleaning out a little bit more but uh maybe they're not going to come out so good right so we could have some modifiers in there if they have to do a little more than than we want plus we're not going to use the code just once we're doing two different sides so now let's move to b this is a knee now the first picture is the fracture okay and then um the second picture is the hardware that was um, used, they're not going to remove this hardware unless there's a complication. And then they would go in and, and remove the hardware. And I noticed 
when I looked at this, if you see, and I don't know if you can see my cursor or not with it being white, but this little knob sticking out right here, that's probably a screw or maybe that's part of the plate, but see how close that is to the surface? What if this is causing a problem and breaks the skin and makes a wound, right? You know, or maybe they banged it on something and then you get an infection and stuff. Then they could have to come in there and just take all that hardware out. And and usually that type of scenario happens like a year later or whatever. And then again, that's all embedded. You can go and um, see uh, there's pictures of uh, like a cadavers that have had repairs done and the bone has grown all over and on top of the screws and stuff. That'd be a booger to get out. Okay, so what do we see here? Which code would we be using for the removal of this hardware? Which code? Two five, excuse me, two zero six eight zero or two zero six seven zero. What is your guess? We have one area. And you guys are Right, the two zero six eight zero again. Very good. All right, let's see. Now we're going to go to C. This is, um, you know, I don't know if it's a tibia fibia fracture, but notice the incision there at the top of the foot coming up the ankle. I think this was an ankle fracture. That's what it was. I looked up. So we have pinned into the tibia fibia. We've got we've pinned down into the calcaneus, uh, uh, which is the the heel bone of the foot. And I suspect this rod here is goes up and is pinning uh, to the this part of the foot someplace to hold all of that in place. So it's holding that ankle like this, you know, and so that ankle's not flopping around. So we're pinned here. We're pinned, um, it looks like here. We're pinned here and we're pinned up here somewhere. Okay, external. Um, what do you think that's going to be to remove that hardware? Whitney says, what are some key Key words to look for to determine if a wound is considered if a if considered a puncture wound. A wound is considered a puncture wound. Um, I don't know. Let me think about that because it would say puncture wound. They're really good about saying punctures. So Susan asked if it's two zero six eight zero times four. Actually, this particular removal is, um, they actually just take the pins out. They're not, they're not, um, even if they are plated in, see these pins are just drilled into the bone. So they would take off this, they would take a wrench or whatever you do. Same thing you use on your tire. Is that a socket wrench that you take the things off? You're going to change your tire? Exact same thing. They're going to take those off and they're going to remove all this hardware. And then these, these rods or screw, they're literally going to unscrew them or pull them out of the bone. So it would not be 20680. It would be 70. Yep. We're not cutting at all. No cutting here. That's the stuff I don't like to see. All right, C, D, external fixation device. Now, uh, again, this is a little misleading because we're wrapped up. Uh, all of the stuff that's external, if they don't have to remove the plate that is probably on the tibia fibia there, then they're not cutting again at all. They're just going to pull those screws out and literally probably just use the drill. So this is not an eight zero unless they cut um, to take a plate that's attached to the bone, a flat plate, but no. All right, E, going up and looking at E, what bone is that? Who knows what bone 
that is fractured here and has a plate. Let's see somebody list it in the chat. Or you know what? You could just yell it at the camera. <laughs> I would hear it. <laughs> uh, Linda's right. It's the clavicle. It's the clavicle, the collarbone. And that's a very unique bone in our body. It's a curved bone. And uh, they do, if they have to put a plate in it, um, they sometimes they don't have to do anything. They just put you in one of those little wing things, make you look like a duck for a while. But they'll put a plate there and they will just put those screws. And very, they don't take that out, usually. They don't. But let's say for some reason it became a problem. They needed to take it out. Now. The skin is very thin right there. However, we do know that they are not going to do that without anesthesia and that you still have to go all the way down to the, the bone. So I would say this is going to be a, a 20680. Yeah, that's what it is. All right, G, that's a finger and that is a pin. And they all have those, they usually have a little ball at the end of them and really I think the only reason they put the ball there is that it doesn't catch on things because it looks like a hook you know those tent spikes that you use that's what they look like thin tent spikes so they kind of screw that ball on there so it doesn't catch and pull on things I assume maybe you guys know an orthopedist that is would be able to tell us more about that I know they didn't come in different colors but usually I see black and white so I don't know if matters if there's a different size of pin or that has an indica indication as to what or is that's just the color that they have um whitney says orthopedics is definitely especially that i would like to learn it is very very unique and our jennifer has worked for oh, more than a decade in orthopedics i think she's almost 20 years in, in orthopedics so if anything comes up with orthopedics usually she's the one that everybody says hey jennifer <laughs> This one, you guys are probably guessing, is the 20670. If you're gonna, if you're gonna use that, you just pull that out. And they literally use that clamp and pull that out. You know, I don't even think they deaden it, to be honest. Uh, maybe they do. I don't know. If you've ever had a pin in your finger, I, I didn't ask my sister, so I don't know if they did. So do we have any questions? Because I think that that was the, yes. The last hoorah, but I can back it up. Any questions before I give you a peek at the resource page? Uh, better understanding of how we would do the units and the difference in the two codes with the 20680 being deep. And the key thing that you look for with the fixation device removal is that layered suture is going to be that giveaway for you. All right. Here's all the references that um, I used. And there was uh, actually quite a few YouTube videos that you can look at. The I was, I had checked Google first and then I went to Google Images to see um you know if if i could find something that worked for what i was wanting you know get a little more detailed and um so i put removal external fixation device and then i put surgical removal you know and and actually the first whole role were youtube videos so uh, i don't know if you want to look at google first you know and have it uh, in images and then jump out to YouTube or actually go to YouTube and, and look those up. But um, that will, uh, there were some really good articles too. This S-I-I-O-R-A is the, the one that was that toe that was laid open with the, you know, the fixation device. Susan said, repeat about when you talk when you talked about the injury being bilateral and the code it should be. If you have laterality, you get to use the code twice, right? It just means it's more than one unit. So it would be the same. It does. It, it could still be um, uh, seven zero and they take pins out of one hand and the other hand, right? So let's say you broke both thumbs and you got pins in both thumbs. That's two different thumbs, two different anatomical spots on the body 
not the fact that it's two thumbs it's the fact that it's the the this is my left hand and this is my right hand because everything's flipped in the video <laughs> so then that would be two units very good susan good question uh go out to the club this is in the club so you can um absolutely go there um, look at more discussions, maybe give some insight. If you have questions about what we talked about tonight, feel free to put them there. It'll pop up and reactivate uh, it and more people can give insight on the, uh, it. I think the, if you want to search in the club, put in ROH for removal of hardware. I think that's, was in the title. I should have linked that. That, that's what I'll do next time. So, um, uh, next, webinar that we do that is a club webinar i will and, and you know wherever the question is in the in the club i'll go pull that to make it easier for you guys to find it okay i, I should have thought of that before yeah all right well we saved time we got done early don't forget go to the club cco.us forward slash club any questions that you would like to see a video on maybe you're looking around maybe it's something that was already answered Maybe it was three weeks ago, and oh, I, I would really love to see a video uh, or was, was talk about that in the club to better explain it. Say that in there, and we'll 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 put that into a nugget. That's what we call them, and um, get it on the calendar. We can do more than one in one night too. I can talk faster. All right, bye guys. Thank you, everybody.